Welcome back to Living Local. The COVID-19 pandemic has had a significant impact on the performing arts. Physical distancing requirements have forced many productions to be canceled or delayed. Today we're getting an update on how one local community theater is pressing on. Joining us in the studio today, we have Laura Adams with the Black Box Theater. Laura, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Well, can you remind folks, uh, what is the Black Box Theater? Well, the Black Box Theater is located in downtown Moline on 5th. We are a very intimate theater, mm -hmm. and literally it is a black box, mm -hmm. and uh, we seat 60 people normally. Mm -hmm. Now, with the, new, uh, with the new requirements, we're only allowed to do either 50% or 50 seats, whatever is less, and for us, the 50% 50, uh, 50 is less, mm -hmm. so that means 30 people in the theater, so you take the actors out, you take the crew out, and you have 26 seats for people to actually see the show. Wow, definitely some trying times for our performing yeah. arts here in the Quad Cities and around the world. Uh, now, you guys were actually in rehearsals when COVID forced you guys to close. So how did you keep the rehearsals running? Well, my actors actually FaceTimed that first month. They were FaceTiming, they were calling, that sort of thing. And then when we really got locked down, we didn't know when anything was going to happen. And as we kind of had the idea when phase four would come in, um, we once again started, uh, started up. So we have only actually been in the theater about 10 days mm -hmm. um, together. And my actors are, they started wearing masks and now they wear shields mm -hmm. and they will be wearing shields during the show. Wow, wonderful. Now, what is Turn of the Screw? I know it's the production you guys are working <laughs> yeah. on right now. Well, Turn of the Screw is a story by Henry James that was adapted many, many times. It's been made into movies lots of times. But this is an adaptation by Jeffrey Hatcher, and it features two people. Um, the woman plays the governess, but the man plays all the other characters um, without costume changes, without any of that. So it's really very interesting how that all works out. Wow, really neat concept there. Um, how are you keeping the theater safe for guests? I know you mentioned a couple different ways yeah. with the capacity as well as the face shields even for the actors. Are yeah. you requiring face coverings for guests? Uh, any other protocols? Yes, our protocols will be that uh, we will not open the doors till 15 minutes before the show. Um, when you arrive at the theater, your temperature will be taken. Um, we will put sanitizer in your hand. You have to wear a mask. Um, and we are d uh, denoting where you can actually sit in the theater. So we have little signs that say, do not sit um, in these seats so that people can be, um, you know, have space around them. Uh, the show is only one, I mean, it's only uh, without an intermission. So that means there'll be less and less people using the facilities. But even so, after each person, that will be um, all sanitized again. Oh, that's great that crazy. you guys are taking all of those <laughs> steps to protect the health and safety of guests. Um, now with the actors, in addition to the face shields, what are some ways you're working to keep them safe? Well, one of the things that we did is we actually had to reblock the show. There were a number of times when they touched each other during the show, and in this instance, um, there's only one time actually where they actually touch each other. The rest of the time, uh, there was a kiss in the show. There's actually two kisses in the show. Those have been reblocked, mm -hmm. so there that doesn't happen. And actually, I kind of prefer what we've done this time. Oh, neat. <laughs> um, and uh, so, and the only time they're actually really together is at the very end. But the rest of the time, we've managed to keep them kind of separate from each other. Wow. Laura, you know, you mentioned you guys have to be at half capacity, which, you know, when, it, when you, minus the actors on it, you said, what, 20? 26. 26 yeah. folks that can come in. You know, for a performing arts company, that can be discouraging. I know, I know, because I used to be in theater before, and you really feed off the the audience. And mm -hmm. you know, when the numbers are down, how are you guys staying motivated through these really crazy times? Well, in one respect, we're lucky because we are small, and um, and any dollars that come in through ticket sales help us pay the rent. Whereas, you know, our larger theaters, my heart's breaking for them because. 50 seats in, is not going to do it for them. It doesn't allow them to stay open and, and be financially viable. So, you know, for us, um, I'm, I'm pleased we're able to open, but, you know, I want people to feel that they're safe. And if that's something that they really don't feel, if, they, if they're no longer going to church because mm -hmm. they don't feel safe, then, then they ought not to come. Mm -hmm. um, because we are going to have these protocols, and, um, and if you don't want to follow them, 
we're not the place to be. Absolutely. So, you know, but I, I think like any actor, you go out there no matter how many people are in the audience and you give your very best. Mm -hmm. And that's what my guys are doing. And so I, but I think the audience will respond to the show. Oh, yeah. that's really encouraging. Laura, why do you think it's so important to continue offering theater to our community, especially during these times? Well, if you look at anything, when people look to come and live in a, in a community, theater, museums, ballet, the symphony, all of that, those are all a quality of life. Mm -hmm. And when we take them out, look at how people have been spending their times. They've been binge watching everything they can find on Netflix and Hulu and all of that sort of stuff. So we want to be entertained. It feel, you know, and certainly theater feeds the soul. Um, one of the things that we've learned is that, um, and we're following sort of these two theaters in Massachusetts. They're, they're one of the few um, areas where people have actually opened a theater. And so we're following a lot of their protocols. But one of the other things is we've discovered we can't do a musical because when you sing, particles go farther sure. out. Um, so, and we're looking at shows that obviously are smaller casts because bigger the cast, less people in the audience. Mm -hmm. So all of those things have to play into it. But I think really it just comes down to it's what makes us happy to sit and be entertained, whether that be dance or the symphony or, you know, or the music of any kind or, or the theater. Well, thank you all so much for pressing on and taking all those precautions to continue offering this uh, soulful, wonderful thing to our community that we all need so much right now. Thank you, Laura. Thank you for letting me be here. Absolutely. Well, if you guys would like some more information, you can visit theblackboxtheater.com. We'll also have those details posted on ourquadcities.com.